welcome to this class. Uh, here again we have a lab for you. Uh, in this lab we will show it to you how the electron beam evaporation works. If you recall the E beam uh, is a technique which falls under physical vapor deposition. Now, uh, physical vapor deposition also has thermal evaporation and sputtering. Right? So, today we will see how the electron beam evaporation system works and uh, how we can have the vacuum after having a vacuum uh, how can you uh, use the electron beam uh, to deposit materials uh, onto the substrate. These materials are the materials uh, that cannot be uh, deposited uh, using thermal evaporation because these materials that we can use in the E beam evaporation system have a higher melting point compared to the source holder right. So, in the thermal evaporation we have a source holder we were hitting the source holder and you are melting the material within the source holder and you are depositing it. But in case of E beam evaporation we are not doing this uh, the same here the electron beam will hit the material uh, which is loaded onto the crucible and uh, depending on the point source or scanning source the electron beam uh, will melt this material and the material will get deposited. So, you will see how the chamber looks like uh, we will show it to you where can you load the substrate uh, uh, substrate which is uh, the substrate holder when you can load the source this is a crucible uh, from where the electron beam will come uh, uh, always there is a quartz crystal monitor to understand the thickness of the film that we are depositing right. So, please see the uh, lab component and I hope you enjoy it I will meet you at the end of the lab. Hello and welcome back. Uh, as in the coursework we have already seen the building blocks of any microfabrication process uh, which are uh, deposition, lithography and etching. So, let us start with the deposition which can be of two types. Uh, either you can have a physical, vapor, uh, physical vaporization deposition that is PVD or a chemical vapor deposition that is the CVD. We will be focusing on PVD as of now. And, uh, in this PVD, uh, the first tool that we are going to see is uh, the E-beam thermal evaporator. So, what happens in PVD is uh, uh, the molecules of the required, uh, desired material are physically coming out of a source and they stick on your uh, sample or the substrate. So, and, it's, uh, and in comparison to CVD, where uh, the precursors uh, are flown into a chamber and uh, what you will have what what happens is uh, on the desired substrate or the sample these chemicals will come together under favorable conditions such as pressure and temperature and they will do a chemical reaction there will be a chemical reaction which uh, results in the deposition. So, starting with this tool uh, which is the E beam thermal evaporator what happens here is uh, this, uh, the desired material will be heated and the, uh, it, it gets melted and its vapors travel upwards and on the substrate holder which is at the top uh, you will be having your substrate or your sample whatever you call it and these vapors will come and get deposited. Now this can be done in two ways. Uh, normally we would go with a resistive kind of heating there will be a heating coil on which there will be our sample uh, sorry the desired material and uh, as a current is passed through this resistive coil uh, you uh, the, uh, the the desired material uh, melts and the vapors are formed. An advanced version of this would be the E beam evaporation where an electron beam is directed towards the uh, crucible holding your sample the desired material and the vapors thus formed will go and uh, de get deposited on the substrate. So, uh, let us get started with this tool. Uh, so, this is one of the PVD systems the E beam thermal evaporator that we have in our lab it is an HHV uh, auto 500 which is manufactured by an Indian company uh, Hind High Vacuum. So, let us start with the chamber first. So, uh, as we might have covered in the theory class that uh, for uh, thermal evaporation or e-beam evaporation uh, we need a very high vacuum that is 
uh, 10 to the power minus 6 uh, millibar. So, but why do we need this vacuum? So what happens is when uh, you are uh, evaporating uh, 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 the required material, so if the pressure is uh, too high, or uh, even it, it, it is atmospheric pressure, there will be a lot of other molecules uh, between the uh, source and the substrate. So what happens is there will be a lot of collisions. And uh, uh, this, uh, this collision, uh, that means that the mean free path between two subsequent collisions is uh, very uh, low. And uh, if the mean free path is very high, so what happens is uh, this uh, source molecule can reach the substrate molecule without any interruptions. And this mean free path, lambda, is inversely proportional to the pressure. So if we have a very low pressure, the mean free path increases and there is no interruption between the source and the substrate. So, uh, so this chamber is capable of uh, reaching a pressure of up to 10 to the power minus 7 millibar. But uh, we can operate uh, till, uh, uh, we usually operate between uh, 10 to the power minus 6, in the range of 10 to the power minus 6 millibar. So there is this viewport uh, from which you can just move the shutter the viewport cover shutter and see what's happening inside. This is the handle that you use to uh, just pull out this door. There is a water jacket for cooling. Because since it's a thermal evaporation, the temperature inside would be uh, quite high. And uh, if a user ha uh, accidentally touches it, uh, there will be a physical damage to the user, of course. So in order to avoid that, the chamber, uh, the outer wall of the chamber is water cooled. Like, uh, these are the ports for water cooling. Uh, okay, now we can move to the uh, next part, which is the user interface panel. So this is the monitor where you can see what is happening, what all processes are happening. And also it takes user input as it's a touch, touch screen. This is the uh, power button, the reset button for all the peripherals. This light, uh, this light is for uh, to ensure that the, all the safety interlocks are on, the water cooling is on, and source enabled, that is for the E-beam. And the most important part is the emergency stop button. In case you find that anything is going wrong with the tool, what you can do is simply to pull and turn this off. So all the processes will cease at the exact time, and the expert uh, uh, can come for maintenance later. The next is the source control. Once you switch on the uh, E-beam, you can uh, control the voltage and current from here. And there are some uh, indicators as well, which will tell you whether uh, the vacuum, the power, and the rotary drive are functioning or not. Next is the sweep control. What happens is when you have an uh, electron beam, it will fall on a single point. But what happens, what happens if the uh, you want to cover the entire area of the crucible, the entire area. So what uh, what we can do, we give we can give a sweep of in x and y direction, which ensures that there is a uni uniform heating on the surface. That is the electron beam uh, falls uh, uh, uniformly over the entire surface. So this is for uh, that. Next is uh, the uh, turret control. If you can see, uh, there is one, two, and one, two, three, and four and you can control it with this knob. So these four uh, uh, correspond to the four materials that we have, um, uh, platinum, uh, gold, uh, aluminum, and uh, titanium. Next is the uh, DTM, that is the digital thickness monitor, which gives us an idea of what is the rate of deposition right now and uh, how much film has deposited. And uh, this is just the uh, indicator, uh, the, uh, the display. The uh, actual mechanism I'll uh, explain in a few uh, minutes, uh, which uh, once we open the chamber. Next is the, uh, this is the control for DTM. Uh, this is the control for uh, switching off and on the DTM. This is uh, for uh, sw uh, sh uh, switching on and off the shutter. So what happens is, uh, once, an, uh, once the E-beam starts to fall on the uh, uh, source, it will start evaporating. But since we need, an, uh, we need uh, uh, a uniform or a 
very controlled deposition what we'll do once uh, it, although it is evaporating we'll place a shutter or just above the source so what happens is whatever deposition is happening is happening on the shutter and not on your substrate so this gives us more control over the thickness this is the for the rotary drive so what happens is uh, uh, your uh, uh, vapors are coming from one particular point and it might happen that the entire chuck might not get a uh, uniform coating so if you have a rotary drive which may ensures that your uh, uh, sample is rotating uh, it ensures that you have uh, a very good uniform deposition this knob is for controlling the speed of the rotary drive and these knobs are for uh, uh, these knobs and uh, uh, the indicators are for low thermal deposition. When we are not using E-beam, we use uh, the resistive coil heating method. These indicators are for that. And down, if you can see, here is the control for the E-beam transformer. So now I think we can start with the process. First, I'll be turning on the chiller unit, which ensures that uh, what this um, water jacket uh, always maintains the temperature between around 23 to or 25 degrees. Next, I'll be turning on the main supply for this tool. Next is this power button as discussed. And now you can see that the safety interlocks and the water cooling is functional. So that means that we can fo move forward now. So let's have a closer look at this panel. Uh, if you can see the system status shows standby. The chamber pressure uh, is in the order of 10 to the power minus one millibar. And we have some options here, start and vent. There are other options as well, but they are not highlighted. That means it's not available at the moment. It depends on in which state the system is and accordingly you will have some options. Right now, the only options available to us are start and vent. The start will uh, turn on the uh, both the pumps, which is the roughing pump and the turbo molecular pump. So uh, I'll explain it to you what is the function of these two. Let's first start the, uh, mot uh, the pumps. <coughs> Meanwhile, I'll explain you uh, the, the schematic diagram. So if you can see, this is the roughing pump and this is a turbo molecular pump. The function of roughing pump is to uh, take the uh, uh, chamber from atmospheric pressure to uh, a high vacuum, which is 10 to the power minus three millibars. Once a high vacuum is reached, this uh, turbo molecular pump takes over and its function is to take the, uh, uh, the conditions from a high vacuum to very high vacuum. That is from 10 to the power minus three millibars to 10 to the power minus six millibars. And there are some walls here, as you can see, and this is the actual chamber. So what happens is once uh, 10 to the power minus three millibar is reached, this uh, roughing pump uh, uh, also uh, bypasses. Uh, right now, the uh, the uh, chamber is directly connected to the roughing pump via the roughing wall. That is, the ch ch uh, chamber will go till 10 to the power minus three. Once it does, that condition is reached, this uh, this wall will uh, uh, this wall will close, and uh, the entire uh, 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 the entire uh, system will be uh, through the turbo molecular pump to the roughing pump. Now you can see the uh, status is turbo acceleration. That means the turbo molecular pump is uh, accelerating. Once it is at the full speed and uh, also uh, the, uh, the pressure inside is uh, 10 to the power minus three millibar, this turbo molecular pump will take over. Now, meanwhile, what we can do is we can vent the system and I'll show you what's inside the chamber.
if you can hear there will be a, a, a small hissing sound which uh, which indicates that air is entering the chamber now the chamber pressure is uh, 10 to the power my uh, 10 to the power 3 millibar so that means it is at atmospheric pressure and we can now open it i'll just seal it so let's open this chamber and uh, now we'll be looking having a closer look at uh, what all components are there inside this chamber okay so the first and most important is the this chuck this chuck is uh, where you load your sample or your substrate this sample or substrate is where you actually want the coating uh, the next is this uh, entire uh, 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 this entire uh, uh, system which uh, which composes of uh, an, uh, a, a source from where the e-beam is coming this e-beam comes uh, from from this uh, window this port and falls onto this crucible there is a crucible right now it's set to aluminium and uh, and there is this uh, shutter which i was talking about so once it starts evaporating the uh, 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 the after melting when it starts evaporating uh, this is the shutter which gives us control over the uh, thickness that we are going to achieve and uh, next is the uh, this this is the uh, uh, the digital thick the part of the dig digital thickness monitor that actually works it's, it's called a qcm quartz crystal monitor there is a a quartz piece and as the uh, deposition is happening uh, more and more uh, material is deposited on this quartz crystal its thickness increases and there is a shift in this in the frequency what the dtm does is it uh, uh, it calculates uh, the thickness based upon this shift in frequency next at the back you can see is a, a spring uh, kind of uh, structure which is a board for uh, low temperature heating basically that works on the resistive heating principle so as the current passes through it it becomes uh, it, it gets heated and it's the, the it's made of tungsten so if there is a material which has a low melting point is kept in that uh, is kept in that board it will get start melting and evaporating off and for uh, for the same there is this shutter which will give us uh, control over its thickness okay so i can show you how this uh, these things uh, work so i'll ask my colleague to turn on the rotary drive and you can see that the chuck starts moving okay on this chuck uh, sample will be loaded and it will also be moving along with this chuck the speed can be adjusted but uh, we usually keep it around uh, 5 rpm next is the uh, shutter i'll ask my colleague to uh, turn off the rotary drive and uh, uh, turn on the shutter you can see the shutter has moved and now if uh, the vapors from this source will directly hit the uh, substrate you can uh, close the shutter Uh, now we can see uh, the rotary drive here uh, okay uh, uh, we can turn uh, uh, lift the shutter and we can see the rotary drive uh, we can switch it to one uh, you can see that the uh, drive is moving and the uh, the turret is moving and uh, the crucibles are changing Yeah, so we have reached uh, the crucible number one, which is titanium. Oh, my bad. This is crucible number three, uh, which is platinum. Okay, now we can close the shutter. Uh, now, what I'll be doing is I'll take out the chuck and I'll load a glass slide on it. And we will have a demonstration of the deposition process.
So I've taken out this chuck. Uh, it's a 12 inch chuck. And on that I have fixed a glass slide as you can see on which we will be depositing aluminum today. So let's place it inside. Ensure that while opening the uh, chamber, uh, it's in sealed condition and which we have ensured. Close the door. And uh, now we'll start the vacuuming process. As you if you can see, there is, uh, I told you that there are certain uh, options were grayed out at that time, uh, which are available right now. So right now, I'll start the vacuuming process, which is cycle. And now the cycling sequence has started. And if you can hear, this is the sound of the roughing pump. Like I said, the roughing pump will take uh, my chamber from atmospheric pressure to a high vacuum, which is 10 to the power minus 3 millibars. Once that is reached, uh, the turbo molecular pump will take over and will uh, reach uh, 10 to the power minus 6 millibars. So let's wait for it. So now it has been around 40 to 50, 55 minutes uh, since we started the vacuum. And uh, we started from atmospheric pressure that is 10 to the power plus 3 uh, millibar. And now we have reached a very high vacuum which is 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 millibars. So uh, like I explained earlier and we have seen that uh, a, lower, uh, a lower pressure or a high vacuum or a very high vacuum means that the mean free path of uh, the molecules is very large. That is the, uh, the particles or the molecules from the uh, source can reach the target with uh, minimum collisions with each other. So keeping that in mind, we have a very high vacuum and now we can start the process. So, the first thing I'll do is I'll switch on the e uh, electron gun. So, now I have turned on the power to the E-beam gun, the main power. Now, now I'll switch on the transformer. Now that the uh, E-beam is on, now we'll see what options are available to us uh, in the control panel. We see right now we have seal and vent. We won't be venting, we vent when we want to load or unload the samples. So the only option is seal. Once we seal the chamber, then we can start with the process. Now I have pressed seal. Now the options available are stop, cycle, vent and process. Like I said, we'll be starting the process because we don't want to cycle again. The vacuum is already holding. Now the process sequence has started. Once it is complete, we can start with the uh, uh, deposition. So now the process sequence is going on. Till then we will uh, turn on the uh, 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 source control. The first display is for the voltage, which is uh, maintained around 5 kV. And the second is the filament current, which we can adjust. Now I'll turn on the gun. As you can see, the voltage is 5 kV and the uh, current here is almost 0, 0 milliamps, which we will be adjusting. Okay. And uh, next you can see here is the sweep control. Sweep control is like if you, when you have, like I have already talked about it, uh, the electron beam will be falling at, at a point. but if you want a uniform heating throughout the surface, we sweep this uh, uh, this beam so that it covers the entire uh, area, entire surface area of the crucible. With that, we will be doing using X, Y and these waveform controllers. The next one is uh, the turret controller. As we have seen that we have four metals that we can, uh, we, can we have four metals uh, that we can uh, uh, deposit using E beam. So we have uh, the, the current turret is at number three, and we need to deposit aluminium, which will be at four. So I'll just switch it to four. It takes some time because uh, the mechanism is a bit uh, slow. 
Now you can see the LED at the number four is uh, glowing. That means we have the crucible, uh, crucible number four loaded. And you might have also seen that when I switched from crucible three to four, this display went off, which is a safety mechanism so that your e-beam doesn't fall in somewhere in between and it falls all, always on the crucible. Now, uh, we can see here see we have some options, the DTM. Now we can see we have some options here. We'll check the DTM. When we turn on, the DTM starts. We just have to reset it. And now it's showing zero, zero. So, like I said, we, uh, the deposition here is, uh, is something that we control, uh, the, like the thickness needs to be precisely controlled. So we have this DTM or the digital thickness monitor, which is paired up with the crystal, uh, crystal oscillator, quartz crystal oscillator that we had seen inside the chamber previously. This is the e-beam gun shutter, which I'll be using to start and stop the uh, deposition process. See, the e-beam, uh, the electron beam will be falling on the uh, source at all times, uh, the, the crucible at all times, and continuously this uh, material will be evaporating. But when we have the shutter, the material doesn't reach your substrate. So it is quite, uh, so in this way, we can control when we start the deposition and we stop when we stop it. So, uh, so we can, I think we can get started. We'll slowly increase the current to 10 milliamps. It's okay, it's 11 milliamps, doesn't matter. Uh, we'll have this for uh, one minute. So it has been one minute and uh, we have preheated the crucible uh, at 10 milliamps. So now we'll switch to 25. Again, we'll, uh, we'll preheat at 25 milliamps for some time and then we'll increase to uh, 35. So meanwhile, I'll uh, show you about this. This is the control for rotary drive. Uh, as I had explained uh, that uh, in the previous, uh, uh, pre previously, uh, when I had opened the cham chamber, we saw the chuck is uh, keeps on rotating. That is to ensure that we have a, a uniform deposition. Now the chuck, chuck is rotating inside. So I think it has preheated for some time now. Now I'll uh, increase the current to 35 milliamps. So So now we'll increase the current to uh, 50 milliamps. and wait for some more time so that uh, we have a, uh, uh, so that uh, the material, desired material which we are going to coat as a deposit uh, is uniformly heated. The next step would be to increase uh, this current to around 70 milliamps and we'll carry out the deposition from there until we have a uniform coating. Now one minute is over and we'll increase the, uh, the uh, filament current to 70 milliamps. And we'll now we'll open the shutter. So now the shutter is open. The uh, vapors from the crucible will directly come and uh, uh, stick to the uh, sample. Now we'll wait for uh, some time and until we have a uniform deposition, and then we'll take out the sample. Uh, so now we have uh, carried out the deposition for like uh, around 15 minutes and uh, 
Now, uh, and we can also see that there is some sort of deposition through the viewport. What we'll do now is we'll stop this, uh, uh, stop it uh, using this uh, e-beam shutter. Now the shutter has uh, come over the uh, source. So now we cannot, uh, the, the whatever deposition is happening, whatever, whatever vapors are coming, they are just sticking on the shutter and not our samples. Now I'll, I'll slowly decrease this current. Okay, now the current has reached almost zero. I can turn off the gun. Wait till the voltage also falls to zero. Then turn off the supply. Next, I'll turn off the DTM. And also the transformer which I had earlier switched on for the EV. Okay, now the, all the systems have, uh, uh, not all the systems are off, we are ready to take out the samples. For that, first we'll need to break the vacuum. Okay. Oh, and uh, my bad, I forgot to turn off the rotary drive. Okay, now we'll just uh, break the vacuum. For that, we don't have any other options other than seal. We'll quickly press on seal. And now vent the chamber. Uh, if you can uh, hear the uh, a slight hissing hissing sound, uh, that means that air is entering the chamber and the vacuum is being uh, broken. Meanwhile, I'll just turn off the main supply uh, for the e beam. Okay, now we can see that the chamber pressure has reached 1 into 10 to the power 3 millibars. That is the atmospheric pressure. Now, uh, the, since the chamber is vented, uh, we can, it is safe to uh, open the chamber and take out the sample. I'll just seal it and take out the check carefully. While taking out the chuck, it is important that you don't touch any of your samples. Now, if you can see closely, there is a, a very uniform deposition uh, and a mirror-like finish of aluminium. I'll take out the sample from this tape and then you can appreciate that the part which was covered by this uh, capped on tape is, will still be uh, transparent and the rest of the parts will be uh, having a mirror like finish. Uh, now if you see the chuck, you can clearly see the, that the area where we had that capped on tape and uh, the glass slide, the sample uh, is still having that golden and a dark grayish uh, color while the rest of the uh, chuck or the substrate holder looks sort of like uh, aluminium. So I'll show you the sample which we have deposited in a minute. B uh, meanwhile, I'll play, place the chuck back into the chamber and put it in vacuum. Uh, so now we have taken out the same sample and placed the chuck. You can see there is a, in the center there is an aluminium finish while at the edges where we had this capped on tape, uh, you can see it is still transparent. Now we can zoom in and have a, a, a really close look to at our sample. You can notice at the edges there is a tra the transparent glass light uh, is visible while the uncovered area which we had in the middle has uh, aluminium coating and a mirror finish. So now that we have kept the uh, substrate holder back into the chamber, the next step would be to uh, take the chamber back to its uh, vacuum condition. 
uh, it is not a good idea uh, for the from the point of view of the tool life that we keep uh, keep it uh, leave it at uh, atmospheric pressure so what i'll do is i'll just click on cycle which will start the vacuuming cycle once it is but once it has uh, reached uh, the required uh, uh, the required uh, uh, pressure that is uh, somewhere around between 10 to the power minus 4 or minus 5 vacuum millibar vacuum uh, it, it uh, we can then switch switch off the tool so at that time i'll just uh, press on stop this option which is not available right now and once it is at stop uh, i'll wait till the Turbo molecular pump uh, goes but decelerates and turns off. The tool will uh, go on standby and then we can switch off the main supply. That's it. Thank you. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video uh, and you have seen that again we need to follow the protocol. That is why the first video of the lab was on how to gown, right, and how to enter the clean room facility. Once you know, the next uh, thing is when you want to operate a system, what are the uh, process to operate the system as you have already seen that before we get a high vacuum like 10 to power minus 6 or minus 5 minus 6 torrs initially we had to get a base vacuum which is close to 10 to power minus 2 to 10 to power minus 3 torr. To get the base vacuum we use primary pump to get the high vacuum we use secondary pump. In this case you have seen turbo molecular pump. Uh, there are two gauges uh, for the understanding the uh, vacuum. Uh, or measuring the vacuum, uh, one is called Pirani gauge and second is called Penning gauge. The Pirani gauge is used to measure the uh, base pressure and the Penning gauge is used to measure the uh, uh, high vacuum which is about 10 to power minus 5 minus 6 torrs. Uh, so, here you have also seen that we are depositing a metal onto the substrate. Right? So, this is a EB mu operation system. Now, in the next class we will see one more system which is we call a sputting. Till then you take care, I will see you in the next class, bye for now.